And let's talk about <clears throat> different skill types. We're going to talk about a few today. But if you start looking into this, um, it seems almost daily, not really. But there are different skill types that are emerging as teams are assessed and analyzed. And um, you know, right now, these are some of the ones that are a little bit older, been around a little bit longer. So we'll focus on these. So next slide. So <clears throat> I'm sure everybody is familiar with the phrase, um, there is no I in team. Pretty much I-shaped skills, the same thing applies. I-shaped is, you know, single field. This is the old kind of mode of working, you know, back in the day that, um, you know, somebody had one job, right? We've heard that you got one job. Um, they don't know a lot about different disciplines. They prefer to work on a single job type. Um, generally, and I found this interesting in my research that it was actually stated, I would have assumed this, but employees prior to Gen X have been considered specialists. So if we look back, you know, generations, you know, at some of our relatives, um, they had, you know, one type of job. It might have had a little bit of diversity, but it was pretty narrow in scope. And the pros for this is they could have deep knowledge and experience in one area. I mean, they could know all about widget building, right? Every single thing you need to know about it. Um, there's still a workplace demand. Um, the cons, if you've got individuals like this, you remember on your team, risk averse. They're not as inclined to enjoy, you know, team focused work. So again, you know, bringing them along with you when you're building a team, it's not impossible. It's just going to take a little bit more. It's going to take trying, you know, different types of techniques and approaches. So next slide, please. T-shaped skills. This is, you know, kind of foundational. I think back in the beginning, in the 80s and 90s, there were some other discussions occurring, but T-shaped cells it would be the more common older. Um, so there's a thorough knowledge and strong skill in a single area, uh, but they can also work beyond that single area of expertise. And they're able to collaborate with other disciplines. They're able to, you know, stretch. That's why the bar in T represents a capacity to collaborate across disciplines. Um, pros, able to imagine, uh, or that should be imagine, that's my mistake, typo, I'll fix that, didn't catch that one. Uh, able to, um, you know, imagine a problem or issue from different perspectives, enthusiastic about learning, finding out about other disciplines. The cons is that T-shaped um, skill employees, you know, while desirable, HR job descriptions don't quite reflect that yet. That if you interview for a job, that's the unspoken, you know, if uh, you're told, okay, you're not selected because you didn't have this and this, well, wait a minute, the job description was spoken as that uh, focus on this. Yes, but we want this, this, and this, right? It's that, it's still that unspoken. Um, I think my theory is that because HR right now is striving to fill a lot of positions, a lot of different openings, they're maybe not being that selective yet, although they or the hiring manager really want to be. Um, so there's a mismatch there with demand availability of those individuals and you know making that right match. Next slide. Thank <laughs> you.